Microbes, also known as microorganisms, are the smallest living things we know. They're everywhere. They're in the air that we breathe, the soil we walk on, and they're even inside you as well. You might know them as the most common types, bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. The majority of these microbes don't actually hurt you and play an essential role in things such as our digestion, protecting against infection, and contributing to the ecosystem. However, some microbes can be harmful and cause serious infections. Antimicrobial drugs are medicines used to prevent or treat infections caused by these harmful microbes. They come in four specific types, antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics, with each one playing a very important role in treating a specific type of organism. When Sir Alexander Fleming returned from his holiday in 1928, only to find that he had inadvertently created the antibiotic penicillin, his discovery changed everything, making bacterial diseases and infections much more treatable for the first time. This was then followed by several other key antimicrobial drug discoveries, Nystatin in 1949, the first antifungal treatment. Fibonidazole in 1961, the first antiparasitic drug. And idoxyuridine in 1963, the first antiviral drug. During the 1940s and 50s, shortly after antibiotics became available for public use, researchers and doctors began to notice that certain microbial strains were becoming resistant to treatment, but nobody knew the exact cause at the time. Little did anyone know that this was the early signs of what has become a significant global health challenge, a phenomenon called antimicrobial resistance, also commonly known as AMR. So what is AMR and why should we be concerned? Antimicrobials have multiple uses in treating disease and infections, and almost all modern medical technology depend on them. They help fight conditions such as tuberculosis, meningitis and pneumonia. They aid with specialist cancer care and antimicrobial chemotherapy treatment. They sterilize operating rooms, help deliver babies, and can even help reduce the risk of early infection in people with fresh organ transplants. The problem is, all of this requires one very important thing, that the antimicrobial drugs we use remain effective against the microbes they're used to treat. AMR is when these microbes change over time, either by random mutation or surviving treatment through natural selection, leaving behind a more resistant strain, which can then replicate further. This presents a problem for modern medicine, as conditions which are now treatable could once again become a danger to global health. AMR is a natural consequence due to the fact that microbes are living things which evolve over time, but changing our behavior in a few simple ways can help to reduce the overall impact. Having strong infection prevention and control practices is perhaps the best and easiest way to reduce the risk of transmitting infections. As this reduces any harmful microbes before they can cause an infection in the first place, avoiding the need for specific antimicrobial treatments. Understanding how infections develop through the chain of infection and breaking it through practices such as good hand washing catching coughs, colds and sneezes, adequate cleaning in the home, in the office and in healthcare settings and general awareness of the issues will also help. Minimizing our overall environmental exposure through effective water treatment and agriculture procedures are also important. Rational use of antimicrobials such as antibiotics and the development of more targeted narrow spectrum treatments is also important. As many of the antimicrobial drugs in use today are broad spectrum derivatives of much older drugs, which will one day become ineffective. If you have found this video interesting or want to find out more about what you can do to help tackle antimicrobial resistance, check out the links on this page.